so in the last uh, lecture we did uh, discuss the microcanonical ensemble and the canonical ensemble we started we discussed and I, I want to repeat that statistical mechanics starts with the two postulates and one hypothesis the postulates are uh, time average equal to ensemble average time average is the experimental quantity experimental thing that goes on and uh, Willett gives at the main construction the brilliant construction of ensemble so they had to put these two together that the first postulate time average equal to ensemble average second postulate in order to ensure that equality that every state visited in time averaging is equally probable or every state picked up in ensemble average is equally probable however one has to assure or want to guarantee that this system trajectory takes you to all different states and that is the ergodic hypothesis uh, that means every state is visited uh, and that is the one that has uh, evoked a lot of uh, research over the years particularly in uh, from mathematicians and uh, the, uh, the, the statistical mechanics starts uh, at the level of uh, uh, construction of this formidable theoretical framework the most important role is played by this relation of Boltzmann's formula entropy equal to KBL and omega which is often not realized that the entire statistical mechanics the microcanonical canonical grand canon all the ensembles everything relation between statistical mechanics and thermodynamics is derived from Boltzmann formula so a variant of Boltzmann formula which is here omega is the number of microscopic states available to the system which is kept fixed at uh, volume V energy E with n number of particles a variant of that is used to derive the second equation which is uh, free energy Helmholtz free energy equal to minus kb kb is Boltzmann constant times temperature then logarithmic of the canonical partition function and canonical partition function is given by this quantum version of sum over energy levels or classical that is uh, integration over the phase space position and momentum what we will do today we will go from um, canonical ensemble to grand canonical then ultimately to uh, isothermal isobaric uh, ensemble so the whole derivation remember when we did from microcanonical to canonical we had the following uh, construction a mental construction you put all the systems in canonical ensemble together and we allow them to exchange uh, energy and we put them in a, a temperature bath and when they uh, achieve constant temperature then we remove then we remove the bath and put an insulation around it so that ensemble the canonical ensemble becomes a super system in the micro canonical ensemble then we do a super ensemble and with this construction then we repeat the calculations that we did in the micro canonical uh, and that allows us to get to uh, the, the result that free energy equal to minus kvt ln qn so today we will first briefly review the canonical ensemble and then we will go to do the grand canonical and um, we would like to finish today and discuss the isothermal isobaric ensemble which is the NPT ensemble and the NPT ensemble is the one which is most commonly used in computer simulations and also very close to experimental results one you can start this essentially as a derivation as a definition of grand canonical ensemble this is the mu is now the chemical uh, potential this is a horribly mixed notation as i said mu and gamma gets mixed up this would then z to the power n uh, i think this is one of the uh, typos people have pointed out to me so uh, and this is partly my doing because i usually use this notation so this was in between putting uh, 
because many of the things were edited by my students. Okay. Now, what we now have to do, we have to have in this, the put in the constraint, which is the, the how I define, not the constant, how I define average number, which we have to, which will define density, average volume, and what the volume is fixed. So, average, if I get the average number, then I divide by the volume, which is given from supplied from outstrike and external constraint, I will get the density. So, then I have to define an average energy and uh, average energy is this quantity and uh, pressure is so you got to average energy you understand this thing that but now the sum note that sum is uh, the microscopic state or the state of the system which is character microscopic state of the system characterized by energy ej and number n this is not the microscopic state i'm sorry because it's still the macroscopic state uh, and uh, because it's a large number of particles still there much of the time. Uh, interestingly, in the grand canonical ensemble, these, uh, so the, this is the average energy. As I was saying that you note that the, they are a double sum. Now, very interestingly, the same definition we used of the pressure in the canonical ensemble we do the same thing, but again, sum over G and A. And one thing that I was going to say, which is very, very interesting uh, property, you have to look into limiting, limiting properties of this quantity, this grand canonical ensemble. Now, this sum starts from n equal to 0, very, very interesting, not n equal to 1. And Q0 is by definition 1. So, that, so the uh, grand canonical partition function starts with 1, n equal to 0, this is 1 and q 0. That means it does not depend this, so this is a null or vacuum state. That also, no particle in the system also contributes to the grand canonical ensemble. Now, next is n equal to 1, n equal to 2, n equal to 3. And uh, this particular property, plays a very important role because uh, you know when you do these kind of sums that calls the uh, generic function. Whenever I put a polynomial like that is a generic function. So, um, canonical is the generic function of the canonical ensemble that becomes series. These are all positive that is very important and these are all positive because it is nothing but the sum of Boltzmann factors. And Boltzmann uh, e to the power exponential is an entire function that is a completely analytical function. This is a very important property so since it is completely analytical function that means this should is a, another analytical function. You know if you know little bit of mathematics one of the thing now mathematicians are not given to talk of a very big 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 language but there is a thing which is called fundamental theorem of algebra. Uh, Unlike physicists who very easily coin theory of everything and that, those kind of language, mathematicians are not at all, you know, superlative. They are very, very reserved people. But it started with culture and it started with Gauss. So, the, what is the fundamental theorem of algebra? There is a beautiful book by Lebedev. I loved it. Where is that fundamental theorem of algebra? Yeah, that's the rational approximation. That's called rational function. And that's a way to develop a, an approximation. We have all basal function and all these things. We have the rational approximation and a book of apprehensions taken it full of them. But what is the fundamental theorem of algebra? Fundamental theorem of algebra is there a polynomial order n. Then you have n roots and depending if all these are positive, then you will have roots in a complex conjugate. That means one will be um, Z, another will be Z star. The one of the reason many people don't use Z here is that you want to keep the Z as a complex number. You know, uh, that's why many times that's the reason of the confusion that two schools are there. So it is extremely important to realize two or three properties. One of them it starts from n equal to zero. Second, 
that all of them are uh, positive and when all of them positive then you have these roots which are complex conjugate and that plays very important role. You know without that property that will not be able to describe any phase transition or any property okay. Now so then energy goes like that uh, Bj and uh, the pressure is also. So I have now definition of uh, pressure, I have definition of energy and I have definition uh, of uh, all that. Then we play the game, exactly we play it from going to canonical, uh, from micro canonical to canonical, exactly we do the same thing, this dpj, exactly the same equation we did before. But now everything is sum over j and n, there I had sum only over j, okay. Now then we would compare that with the thermodynamics and uh, we will we'll see that the, this already I discussed that uh, Lagrangian multiplier is uh, this thing, okay. Entropy is generalized. Uh, from uh, Boltzmann formula and that this one comes again and again, this variant. So that is what I said, one should, could as well regard it as a uh, postulate and this is the uh, Euler equation. When you combine, you get the following equation PV equal to KBT ln this thing. This is a very powerful and extremely useful thing. Now realize one thing. While in a mic, uh, uh, micro canonical, I will maximize entropy that to find the stable equilibrium system. In canonical, I will uh, minimize the free energy or if I do minus A, that is the better way to write actually, I will maximize minus A which means everywhere I maximize the partition function. So here we maximize the quantity PV. So PV also has the dimension of energy right. So in grand canonical applications in phase transition or the things we impose equality of chemical potential to derive our equations then we put the uh, calculated pressure by maximizing uh, this L and uh, uh, you know sigma. So then we still uh, go on doing the relationship you can uh, a partition functions that we just uh, again the same thing we have to go to g equal to h minus t s and mu and e minus p t. So the kind of things we did in the uh, thing is again done here uh, and one gets the beautiful relations of entropy. So if you have the grand partition function you have this is the entropy then this is the number, this should be average number and this is the pressure. So that finishes this part. Now I will spend some time because this is the one that used uh, most uh, extensively in computer simulations, isothermal isobaric. It was done, it was uh, created because Gibbs, when Willard Gibbs was doing statistical mechanics, Willard Gibbs carried it out the whole development of statistical mechanics with an aim to understand uh, Van der Waals equation of state. So there are those days two major um, approach that is going on the people whose st stat mac was in very incipient condition. One was Boltzmann trying to understand Maxwell distribution and the phenomenon contribution was made by Van der Waals. Actually Van der Waals is one of the underrated scientists of the uh, of the bygone era. So Van der Waals had not only the equation of state, he also had a beautiful th equation of interface. And, uh, and uh, so uh, Willard Gibbs was trying to develop a theory of uh, interface, particularly gas liquid interface. And so as soon as he developed the, the ensemble thing, one of his first goal or was the beginning goal was to understand Van der Waals equation of state. The story is that uh, when he did these things, Maxwell 
so the Willard Gibbs, nobody knew what Willard Gibbs was doing, you know, far ahead of time. So he was doing this ensemble, canonical ensemble, microcanonical, grand canonical, and even terms were new. Nobody understood. However, on the other side of Atlantic, Maxwell was keenly following the development of Willard Gibbs. And Maxwell sent, or the other way around, I think, but they, they, they were made, but sent a solid kind of uh, not marble, but this kind of uh, cement paste with a solid A of uh, uh, Van der Waals loop of equation of state. And Gibbs always used to go to class with the one that sent, uh, was sent by Maxwell. However, Maxwell died very young. Maxwell died at the age of, I think, 37 or 39. And within that little time, Maxwell not only did his uh, kinetic theory of gases, he did a whole of electromagnetic theory huh? and many, many other things. But the, well, of course, uh, we, Fis is remembered for, you know, his uh, contribution, which one of the, co considered one of the most successful theory uh, is that of, uh, that of uh, electrodynamics. Now, Maxwell's equations. And then, of course, he has phenomenal contribution, as you know, in thermodynamics. The Maxwell diagram, SPTV and all these things are Maxwell's. So, it's amazing how much he did in such a short time. I, as I remember, died on 37. So, when he died, there is a com common joke in, at Yale or in America that in the entire world, one person used to understand uh, what Gibbs does and that person is dead. So, nobody, uh, so now, so it, uh, naturally, these, uh, was the emphasis, the NPT, isothermal isobaric ensemble. So we need to spend a little time trying to understand uh, this, this ensemble. So now in this ensemble, we are not allowing number fluctuations and it is very important computer simulation because as I told you, this is the most suitable in many cases. We allow now fluctuations in volume. So long, we have not allowed fluctuations in volume. So this is the time when fluctuations volume is done and that one of the reason is that uh, if you are studying a system where say a liquid is going to crystal, uh, you can simulate with the same number, but volume must change. Like what are going to ice, volume has to increase 10, 11 percent, right? So that has to be allowed. So that's why uh, this is an important thing in uh, study of phase transition. As I said, Willard Gibbs did almost entire thing with an aim and his big paper uh, book where um, all thumb, uh, is entitled thermodynamics of homogeneous or heterogeneous heterogeneous systems that's the whole textbook uh, where many of these things were done now so how do we do we essentially do the same thing again uh, we go on there is a little take a little trick of going through uh, by introducing a legenda transformation and using this relation well known relation and then go to which leads to a definition of Gibbs, uh, Gibbs free energy, not the Helmholtz free energy. But the main thing that I want to, uh, so the analysis goes in the same way, exactly the same way we have done. But one important uh, relation that one finds uh, useful in analytical work is that you can consider grand partition function as a uh, Laplace transformation of the, uh, these Laplace terms, right? So, you can call the volume as a time and beta p as the uh, z, the Laplace variable or s, then you see that one is a Laplace transformation other and that is very, very important consequence because then I can get q as a Laplace inversion of the grand canonical partition function. Now, the A is that, uh, so what we are using, one thing that, uh, see, the other notation that I use, this chapter, I think, I think probably every chapter this will come through, okay. So, this is the notation we are using for both. One is ZVT, that is the canonical, and this is, I don't know who did it, whether printer did it. More, it's possible printer did it. 
uh, and other is the one I use is this thing for isothermal isobaric, uh, NPT. But here, I believe this was done by the printer and we missed uh, uh, it in the gallery. So, but there is no confusion because it is NPT. Probably I let it go that because of the X everywhere it is NPT written. Uh, so, that's why there is not uh, much of a problem. So, what one can do by doing analysis very similar to the one that uh, we are doing all through that going then you have to do uh, what is the average number, what is the average volume and average vo pressure and then you go through that that exercise you is, is that, that particular exercise as we have seen already in, in the case of canonical partition function is elaborate and a little boring. So, I am not going to do that, but uh, this is given in the book also. So, this is the final expression for this is the isothermal isobaric. So, advantage of isothermal isobaric particularly in chemistry is that this is the we get the Gibbs free energy. So, and this plays an extremely important role go back. It is very tempting for me to start on phase transition here, but I will not go do, do that here. So, uh, this quantity the thermodynamic potential in grand canonical ensemble and thermodynamic potential in isothermal isobaric ensemble are. So, if I do so remember G equal to and that is E plus PV minus TS and E minus TS is homogeneity, right, then plus PV. So, G minus A is PV. Uh, so, PV is KBT ln uh, ZVT, right? And G is so I have what I am trying to say that we have a relation okay. at the level of logarithmic of all the partition functions. This is then comes uh, in isothermal isobaric. This is the canonical, and this is the grand canonical, uh, and. Uh, this is an amazing uh, relation that is often given in uh, slightly advanced courses of statistical mechanics that show that this relationship you know you of course you are not expected to derive the whole thing, but you are expected to write down the expression of the potential. This is an amazing uh, relation one should remember because this is the one we use when we do Ramakrishnan use of theory of freezing or density functional theory of freezing that this, this trick is used. Okay, and now, uh, now I have discussed it here. It's very important that what is the physical interpretation then of the what will let you remember and understand the partition function. I have already discussed different ensembles come with different partition function, but all of them have one common thing is that either your uh, the partition function itself it has to be maximum. So the state that is selected, or the state that is thermodynamic is stable is the one that has the maximum partition function. Now, you can understand that physical insight from canonical ensemble. Why? Can anybody tell why canonical ensemble? Everyone gives, every ensemble gives this beautiful interpretation. But why in canonical ensemble, this is particularly enlightening and very, very intuitively clear. So, partition function I can write. Right. I can also write in a uh, some normalization, which I am not going to talk now. All the particles, all the momentum, 
and e to the power minus beta h, so h is the Hamiltonian, right. I do not remember uh, giving these equations to you when he did uh, uh, micro -cano canonical ensemble. So, he started with grand canonical allowed fluctuations, then uh, what, how did the logic go? We started with micro canonical, then we relaxed that, we constructed the uh, thing and then, oh yeah, we did that because that is what was done in normalization, right? Uh, I explicitly separately this I wrote down, but classical version I did not write down. Uh, this is a classical version. Now what I am asking you, we already discussed that Qn for all n, Qn is positive, positive definite, that is a very important quantity because that is, the, they are the coefficients in the polynomial that defines grand canonical partition function. Now I am asking you a question that it is intuitively clear in any of this definition, it is most clear in this ensemble, not even in microcanonical, why a partition function, maximum or partition function selects the macroscopic state. Not that, I am asking something very simple, it is a trivially simple, but you need to think that a macroscopic state which defines the equilibrium or the stable state because that is supposed to be stable for time t goes to infinity. Why that is partition function is maximum? Okay, see, just I give you a simple example and now you should be able to tell I have these two, which one will be selected? Why? There, Baba. That because he, he, this is where this is maximum. If I have just two state like that, then th this still has certain contribution. But I have say infinite number of particles in my system, macroscopic. Each particle is little stabilized. Then this just disappears. This is selected, and that comes from this 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 expression that it is the energetic criteria which you intuitively understand, intuitively understand from our Boltzmann distribution is uh, included in the partition function. And that is exactly, this is very, very important that I am telling because that is how selection is done. Hmm. Absolutely, zip, it just goes through. To keep in coexistence, uh, particularly in computer simulation, is extremely difficult. Even in computer simulation of 1000 particles, this what I am telling here becomes very important. Okay. So, let us continue. These are very, very intuitive and very nice. So, you have to understand. I remember when I taught and gave exams, um, we should do some problems. So, now that what I have been telling is that these, uh, these are the functions. So for a given thermodynamic state, read this uh, and the partition function is maximum at equilibrium. This is a very important thing that notes that my book tells you. Uh, let us uh, elaborate this and uh, uh, the, the often quoted statement to gain some physical insight. Then I describe consider physical quantity, it can be function other than the state functions, then all these quantities are satisfied. Very important because when you try to expand the free energy like in Landau theory of phase transition or any kind of thing that we, the first derivative goes. So, the order parameter, zeta is the order parameter, I mean the parameter that distinguishes between old and new. That we will discuss in detail, uh, this condition is very important. So, the first term uh, and if there is a symmetry then third order term also not there. So, it is that is why this is the reason why the free energy function for small displacement is harmonic, which is an extremely important quantity because the coefficient of the harmonic, the force constant are what we call the response function. 
the specific heat, thermal compressibility, all these things are the second derivative of these quantities. And that is the reason in a phase transition, these quantity will become uh, uh, the uh, harmonic frequency goes to uh, 0 because the springs we call the response functions of the springs and they soften up. It is very beautiful thing that uh, going on there. So then as I am telling you that there are, um, uh, so these are the cartoons, micro canonical, then canonical and grand canonical that kind of thing. My students I found are very good in cartoons mm. and uh, so there is a problem set. I have to imagine somebody has to do the problem set, okay. So this uh, uh, completes the A on, uh, uh, on uh, canonical answer, uh, on, the, on the partition functions. Next what we are going to do is to start on the next chapter which is the, okay. We have two ways to go from here. Uh, but I, I would like to really jump the board little bit and do something very interesting which is this the response functions that you have been discussing. That means which are in terms of fluctuations. So the response functions are secondary variable of the free energy like specific heat and compressibility but their real meaning is that they are the quantities which are the standard deviations or mean square fluctuation of the relevant quantity. So the uh, idea is the following, we will do the response function or fluctuations, chapter I think chapter 5, uh, chapter 6 is fluctuations in the book. After fluctuations, because it is so important I want to do it for next, after fluctuations that was done by Einstein, after fluctuations we do uh, monatomic gas and diatomic gas, alright, okay, thank you. Uh, Right, very good question. Uh, NPT simulation. See, the way when simulation happens, if you plot the pressure, you will find that even with the barostat, which is slightly fluctuating, but we define it, it has to be on the average the pressure you in your piston which is barostat. So it is not correct to say absolutely not fluctuating but it is fluctuating very small amount. The one that is fluctuating is the volume. Volume is fluctuating in a big way but you can still define a volume and the, the uh, mean square volume fluctuation that gives you the compressibility. Uh, Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. The uh, thermodynamic properties calculated in ensemble, every ensemble is the, all the thermodynamic properties are the same. That because one can show, we will do little bit in the uh, energy fluctuations, today, today afternoon we will do that. The fluctuations or mean square fluctuations, see what we need to talk of the quantity and then you know, how it is varying with n and or the fluctuation in the quantity. That you can so goes as 1 over root n or 1 over root v. So n going to infinity. So you start the microcanonical ensemble, no fluctuation is allowed in E, n and v. Now I go to canonical ensemble, I allow fluctuation in energy. Now I calculated how the fluctuation energy goes, it will go as 1 over root n. Now I go to grand canonical, I, I allow fluctuation of uh, uh, n now. Now I calculate how the fluctuation, so the result that you get at the fixed uh, in the micro canonical ensemble becomes the same at canonical ensemble, the same at uh, uh, grand canonical ensemble. Calculation of properties in microcanonical ensemble is essentially impossible, it is extremely difficult. They become progressively easier uh, and that we will discuss. Uh. 
that because yeah, this I think you got to, you know, you need to love mathematics to do stat mag because statistical mechanics is a very mathematical subject. I was going to tell and I forgot because I, I, I usually do a random walk uh, in my teaching, but my uh, all through these years, my students, you know, whom not my own students, my students who took my course always, they say they enjoyed and remembered this little bit of random work that I do. So I tried to tell, that is where I came to tell you the fundamental theorem of algebra, that uh, grand partition function is a infinite series, is a polynomial, but it's a series because up to infinity. However, you can pack only certain number of particles because of the hard sphere kind of interaction, short range interaction. So n equal to never infinity, it becomes a maximum value. So it becomes a polynomial. So when it becomes a polynomial, then it has zeros. Zeros of the polynomial determine the singularity of the partition function and properties. And that, those are the things called very famous, we will do that. I have a chapter, I think chapter 13 or 14 in the book, which called Youngly Theorems. And that was exactly that uh, very, very famous uh, contribution by C. N. Young and T. D. Lee, who got Nobel Prize for quark confinement, but mm, this was also one of their phenomenal contributions. has to be. Take a put, think of putting a marble ball in a jar, you can put only a certain number because after that you cannot pack. So we will come back. Huh?